Hi guys, it's Tim here from cleverbodybuilding.com and we're here at the Ironman gym in Preston with a good friend of mine, John Bridge. Hiya Tim, pleased to meet you, long time no see That's mate. That's it, special guest here. Okay, John's a very experienced bodybuilder, aren't you John? Very experienced. Okay, <laughs> yeah. and we'll just uh, we'll reel off some of your titles to uh, everyone just to make sure they know who you are. Yeah, well 2001, that's when I, I first competed, uh, went into the novice, did a little warm up, uh, well, that was a Wabba UK novice. I won that week after uh, Northwest at Southport novice. I was terrified. Won that. A <laughs> uh, week later, uh, my first uh, Britain, I uh, got third in the British novice uh, finals, which uh, I'd have liked to won, but it, you know everyone said it was all right, so I did that. Uh, 2001, 2002, I was injured due to being a doorman, I had a, a damaged hand. Wasn't as damaged as his face, but it still put me out for a, for a, for a season, you know. Wow. Um, 2003, went straight, made my comeback, went straight into Mr. Class 2. Uh, won the Northwest Class 2, won that, won the overall. Um, got fifth in the Worlds and I got fourth in the Britain. That was in my first season as a mister. That's impressive. And then I had various each year, thirds, fourths, uh, up until 2007, when after five top six finishes, um, coming close, but not close enough, that dogged determination. I won the Britain, Nabba Britain, 2007, We're fifth in the that. world. 2009, same again, 2008, I was training so hard and I just had a real misfortune. I fell down the stairs and snapped my uh, my left cartilage in two. Oh. Uh, I had to have surgery straight away and that put me out for six months. I uh, had a bit of damage to patella tendon as well. Uh, just from going for the midnight pee at 2 a.m. Really? Oh. Yeah, after a stupid leg workout and <laughs> I was eight weeks from... Uh, I'd just come third the previous year in Slovakia. I was, I was, hundred percent and you know bigger and better than the previous year. So uh, by a bungalow, basically avoid stirs. <laughs> by a bungalow. Avoid stirs when your legs are like jelly. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so that put me out um, 2008. But the next year I came back and I got. Um, third, third in Slovakia in the Worlds in my comeback year again. Notice I keep saying comebacks, uh, as me and Tim will mention later. Uh, <laughs> injuries are quite a bugbear of uh, a real bodybuilder, a bodybuilder who trains hard. The lads used to say to me, John, why do you get injured all the time? He said, I never get injured. I said, well, you won't lift in them weights. <laughs> you know, I mean, end of the day, you race a car fast, you've got a good chance of either winning the race or you may come off on the bend. You're at a limit, aren't you? That's it, it's and and scenario. I train to the limits, and I, I don't mind saying I, I tried to avoid injury, but you're constantly pushing, striving for more. Mm. So I made a few comebacks, and then I made another comeback 2011. Uh, went over to Brazil, put six kilogram uh, in weight and water on with the 13 and a half hour flight. Is it? But, yeah, it was wow. 27 hours from leaving my house to get into the hotel. It was two flights. Wow. The main flight was 13 and a half hours. And I decided instead of carving up, obviously, because I could have increased water retention, I decided to uh, take no carbs in. And uh, I had, I couldn't buy any food in Brazil, so I just drank oil. Um, olive oil type, it might even not be olive oil, I couldn't read it because it was in Brazilian, but <laughs> it was some form of oil and it didn't do my backside any help either, you know, but, oh, wow. so that ended up a catastrophe. So wow. I kept on my diet, uh, 2011, I did two shows, which I won the overalls. And then I got third in the England behind the great Dave Fox and Dave Guest, who went on to get first and fifth the following week in the uni. Uh, I had, I wasn't doing the uni anyway because I had a prior appointment, um, but I just wanted to do the England. And uh, that was the last time I competed. I uh, ended up with uh, serious sinus uh, infections and then I had to go private. It took four and a half years to diagnose. And then I had two operations and that's why I say it kept me off uh, competing, uh, in which time I've got wiser. So yeah, I won the UK. 
overall, I won the England, um, Central Britain, uh, and several other titles as well, like all the national titles. But it was always my dream to, to win the World of the Universe, as Ala Arnold Schwarzenegger mm. won the Worlds in 17 and went on to win five NABBA Universes, I think he won. Um, and that's why I compete with NABBA, because of the history and the relevance, you know, to me wanting to sort of follow in my idol's footsteps. So, yeah. 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 So, um, what was your maximum stage weight? Maximum stage weight, uh, yeah, 16 stone four. Wow. So, was, was probably my optimum. I've competed as light as 15 seven, um, when obviously you just decide to try something different and deplete yeah. more. Avoid carb loading. Uh, but probably I, my optimum, I was 16 4 because they did actually weigh us in Slovakia. So when I got third in the world, that's what I weighed then. Wow. Um, for some of the other shows, I might have been a little bit heavier when I won the Britain. Um, Tony Sullivan, God bless him, thought I was a little bit bigger and fuller. So maybe, if, but I didn't weigh myself. Right. Um, I'm, we use the weighing scales just to check that the weight's coming off. Progress. But we don't. We don't, it's about what, how we look at him That's rather right. than say, oh, I'm such and such yeah. a weight, you know. It's interesting that, yeah. because you're a class two, so, uh, I mean, are you... Five, yeah, just a quarter of an inch under five ten. Right. But when I was a doorman, I was six foot four. <laughs> and I put three or four stone on. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Nothing wrong with exaggerating, folks, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. yeah. <laughs> right then, John. So what got you into bodybuilding? Uh, pumping iron. Yeah. Wednesday night, BBC 2, 9 o'clock. My dad was always... Uh, I wrestled as a kid with my father and my granddad. I won't say so much wrestling. I, w I was wrestled, as in, for their training. I was like a, <laughs> I was like a dummy, a wrestling <laughs> dummy. Wrestling. Thrown all over the house. And uh, my dad had a great physique. Back then, bodybuilding wasn't well known. And my friends referred to my father as Tarzan, who was... <laughs> Tarzan was the closest you got. This was prior to Schwarzenegger being on the box office and TV. <laughs> so um, my dad was often referred to as Tarzan because of his muscles. Uh, so my dad had uh, an eye for obviously physical training. Yeah. Uh, I wrestled, so I had great strength anyway. And nine o'clock after school, Wednesday, BBC Two, I'll never forget, that changed my life. <laughs> and that was Arnold bloody Schwarzenegger's fault to put me through all this pain and spikes, Arnold. Terrorising Louis yeah, Fringo. <laughs> that's right. So after that, I joined the gym with my father, just a local sort of health type gym. Yeah. And uh, that was the start of this uh, awesome. crazy journey. The crazy journey. Yeah. It's still going on, eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what's your best memory so far? Best memories, definitely after having so many close calls, winning the Britain 2007 at Southport. It's been a dream since I was 16. My, 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 I, my goals at 16, uh, which were put down by friends and family at first, was to own a, a world-class gym, make a living out of bodybuilding and be Mr. Britain and Mr. Universe one day. And I got close at the Universe a couple of occasions. I got the gym and yeah. I got the British title. That's it. And then Slovakia after the injury with my knee and everything to come back the following year. And I got some first place folks, you know, you know yourself, you can say third, but you're only two or three points from that yeah, dream. That's right. I was third in Slovakia and I was, I was really pleased with my appearance that day. I was, you know, I was up there definitely. So those those two are the the big like, ones, and and probably my first ever show, looking back, because I was bloody terrified. I'm quite a <laughs> quiet, shy guy, believe it or not, and uh, I was a nervous wreck. You know what I mean? And I, I had no confidence. I at can all. relate to that. Yeah, I, I, was, I first... thought I looked oh, terrible, and you know I didn't think I had a chance, but. I saw everyone else and thought, God, they're all better than me. But <laughs> when I saw the photos in the video, I thought, oh my God, you know. Sometimes I, you don't know until a video. No, I didn't know that yeah. was me. No, I didn't. I didn't. That's <laughs> why I waited 19 years, folks, to compete. You know, instead of 19 days like today's generation, uh, I had to, you know, Ian Harrison, the great Ian Harrison, yeah. I was driving to a seminar. In 2000 with Ian, I picked him up at Sandbach. We were driving to the Cotswolds. I was 20 stone, sat with my uh, 
fizzy old friend, Rob. Ian was in the back. He said, how many shows? What shows have you won, John? I said, I'm not done any shows yet, Ian. I'm just trying to get bigger. I had a shirt on. He said, bigger? He said, what do you weigh? <laughs> I said, I'm 20 stone. At the he said, you'd be the biggest bloody novice in the world. He said, I've just come 10 feet Olympia. He said, I'm trying to get bigger. He said, get on that bloody stage, you idiot. And he gave me a good old Yorkshire telling off, you know. Um, but that's how I perceive myself, you know. Yeah, never, I think it's a lot never of Never big think. enough and always mm. wanted to. See, I love the gym. And when I made commentary with the great John Odger, which I was proud to work with for two and a half years, another idol of mine, yeah. amazing bodybuilder, yeah. amazing work ethic, John Odger. And as used to say on the commentaries when we did the TV broadcast that great gym, uh, great physiques, winning physiques are built in gyms, not on stages. Mm -hmm. And all those years and years of building my physique enabled me to go straight into the novices and, you know, win four out of five shows. Yeah. You know, as a, as a beginner, I didn't enter first time, I just went in and straight in there. two years later cleared up in the misters, you know, because I put all that hard crafting. work in. Yeah. Because I thought I wasn't good enough. You know, patience was what was drummed into me from my father. And um, it's something that I try and drum into people down mm -hmm. at my gym and people I come across. Patience is lacking a lot these days, isn't it, Johnny? Unfortunately, Tim, yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. Right, it's true. So going to another one. Um, what do you like the most about bodybuilding? Having great big muscles and being strong, you know, having that, <laughs> having that, seeing Arnold and thinking, Jesus Christ, and Lou Ferrigno in Incredible Hulk, you know. I thought he had like a rubber suit on when I first saw Incredible Hulk. I couldn't comprehend yeah, that, that that was a man. And my dad say, no, son, that's, there is muscles. What are muscles, dad? <laughs> and it took me a while to just, you know, take in that, that you know, how, how, how can you get like that? So he's like a superhero. And we've all had Marvel comics and all this and that. And I think every man, if he was to be honest, would like to have a great physique, but not many can stick in it for more than a week. And when it hurts, they start, they cry, you know, the going gets tough, the tough get going and vice versa. Mm. Most people quit. And I was never a quitter, you know, whether I did me, me wrestling, me grappling, you know, whether I had, you know, problems at work on the doors and whatnot. My greatest asset was always that doggy determination yeah, to win. Mindset. It was the mindset mm. to win. You know, I was called, as I said earlier, Tim, before mm. the interview, always labelled a bad sport at school. I was captain at rugby, captain at cricket, captain at football. Yeah, and if anyone in my team didn't perform, they'd have, they'd have well, I got sent off twice for thumping my own teammates in football <laughs> for not trying, you know. I like it. And that's when bodybuilding, you see, an individual pursuit, yeah. not reliant on teammates, not going to be let down by people that don't have the same determination, yeah. uh, was somewhat something that I really grasped, you know, and whether it had been in, you know. So, yeah, bodybuilding, why, did, why? I wanted to look like Arnold, I wanted to do something, I wanted to do something extreme that was a challenge, something that was ultra tough, something that had met me, you know, so strong, so big, so powerful. And like you say, I think the challenge of, yeah. of changing your entire body. It's a test, right? Yeah, a test. real, real tough test you as know. well. And it's probably one of the toughest tests you're going to get it is. in life, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to diet down to uh, the fat you need to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah, a real know? challenge, yeah. It's tough, that's why not a lot of people do it. Exactly. You know, and then get in that tip-top nick you need to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. really rewarding been. when you can, yeah. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. been better, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, there isn't, man. <laughs> the sense of achievement you get, right? Yeah, yeah, mm. definitely. Right then, John. Um, so we've got to talk about a bit of diet now. Yeah. So we've got some theories on diet. Will you pass on to your, uh, your prodigies as such? Yeah, yeah. So are we talking diet as in building diet or contest yeah, diet? Yeah, well, we, we can talk. We'll talk building first and we go on contest, yeah. Yeah, well, obviously I've been a gym for 20 years we've been here now, so I've had to help a lot of people. Just in general terms, you know, your average gym members or lads that want to get bigger and build their muscles up, not necessarily compete. Mm. But either way to me, you know, the way I was brought up, the old school ways, as I say, uh, I'm not into secret formulas and secret this. 
it's just nonsense, it's just commercialism again. Yeah. I mean, so as I say, your solid basic foods, your eggs, your milk, you know, the protein powders if you use a supplement, your beef, your fish, you know what I mean? And I like to use a variety, you know, a lot of stick someone on turkey seven times a day. Yeah. Or just on potatoes and turkey if they're having carbohydrates. I like to utilise, whether it be off-season or pre-contest, you know, a little bit, as I say, maybe some beef, some egg, egg white, some fish, some turkey, chicken, and I'll get a full amino complex going in. Also satisfying, as I say, that variety, just so you don't get the same bland meal Boarding six or egg. seven times a day. If you make the diet or make your food where you can enjoy it, there is more certainty that you will stick to the plan sure. than getting boredom setting in after you've been on. My diet from my great coach, uh, the legend Chris Snedden, who got me started in bodybuilding in 2000, he was real old school. He was the toughest man on earth. <laughs> and it was turkey, 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 <laughs> turkey, <laughs> boiled turkey. Every meal, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, it just, and it was only 100 grams. He didn't even give me 200 grams Did of turkey. It, oh, it was the smallest bit of turkey you've ever seen. a tough man. <laughs> One lad thought it was a sausage roll. He said, why do you eat sausage rolls every two hours? <laughs> I, I can't remember what I said, but I probably couldn't, uh, couldn't, probably couldn't say it on her. <laughs> sausage rolls every two hours. I said, it's turkey. 100 <laughs> gram of turkey, like it's been for the last 14 weeks. So I like to chuck in a little bit variety. Yeah. If a guy comes to me and he's overweight and but carrying a lot of body fat, his protein will be, as I say, set at simple equation, probably three grams per kilo. Yeah. yeah. So if he's 100 kilo, he'll get 300 grams. I'm not into 400 and 500 and 600 grams. I've found out for, for myself from experimentation that you can still make huge gains off a lot less than, yeah. you know, higher cyber went with 450. But if he's carrying surplus and he wants to lose a bit, obviously, then we look at his carbohydrate intake, yeah. possibly adding a little bit of cardio in. But protein requirements based on that, yeah. as I say, um, formula, I've always roughly stuck to that. Um, and then, as I say, utilising, and also you have to take into consideration, this is why tailored um, diet plans, which I know Tim is uh, very, very knowledgeable on and provides with his company, is important. Don't tell someone they're going to have chicken, this, this and this, if they can't stand chicken. Same again. Yeah. After the day one, they'll be off the diet. <laughs> so you've got to, as I say, you've got to um, discuss with your client, oh, I can't eat eggs, I can't this, I can't that. Yeah. Get a consensus between you of what they do like and what they can afford as well. Yes, Cost being important. It's Stick expensive. someone on fillet beef six times a day, they're going to have to rob a bank, you know. <laughs> totally. And salmon's a fortune now, isn't it? It's expensive. Some yeah. of my lads can't afford salmon. Yeah. You know, so yes. don't put me writing a diet out full of salmon. But we get the protein from what we call real old school sources. Um, I've got a vegan ready for one show, and besides stinking the gym out, it was. <laughs> it, it's a bodybuilding is a tough task without making things tougher, you know. But if people have to do that, then so be it. But it wasn't an easy prep for me to do. Yeah. And I did warn him, I said, I've never got a vegan ready before. And his choices of protein are so limited, you know, it, it, it was hard work. So the variety that we've it, spoke about harder than, it? Yeah. is for people that don't have, as I say, they're not yeah. vegetarian or vegan. I, I like to have a lot of combinations and different protein yeah. sources. That definitely makes so sense. So carbohydrates, as I say, you know, oats is, is the greatest carb source, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, people think they can only have it for breakfast. This amuses me. Yeah. Yeah. You've, John, you've put oats in mid-afternoon. <laughs> they presume, you know, because that's how you, you <laughs> brought up. <laughs> it's breakfast. But you can only have the best form of a carbohydrate in a complex form, but you can only have it for your breakfast. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you get a lot of these preconceived ideas that are incorrect yeah. Yeah. and mythology and everything else. But as I say, if people want to use other, you know, uh, forms of carbohydrate, then so be it. Um, when the skinny lad comes to me, obviously his protein requirement, as we said, yeah. various protein sources, and then, as I say, we'll up his carbohydrate, carbs. in particular before and after training as well. Yeah. That window of opportunity, so to speak. 
So he'll get extra carbohydrate. And then we'll do weight checks where we're not putting on too much of a surplus body fat. Yeah. So we visual check. And then as I say, every Monday, most people I work with, we do a Monday to Monday yeah. weight check first thing in the morning. So regarding coming down, as I say, I like to keep everyone on that scale every Monday just to see whether they've lost or they haven't. This can also catch a few of the old cheaters out, Tim, that we spoke about earlier. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's I put it. Put £2 on last week. Yeah, on ketosis, that's fantastic. And you did cardio twice a day, did you? Yeah, I swear I did cardio twice a day. Right, so you haven't had any carbs for a few days? No, no, but you've put £2 on. Yeah, yeah, I don't know now I've put that on. Well, we do know, you know, you're talking to two wise old horses here. <laughs> and you're a cheat and you're deluded. And uh, you can't, as I say, you Admit can't. Admit it. Yeah. It's you can't walk the walk at the end of the day. Mm. And they think we're stupid. I've had people on ketosis put six pounds on in a week. You know what I mean? And then three months later, I find out that they've been eating all sorts of shite. <laughs> you know, which I knew, yeah. but I couldn't prove. You can't, but yeah. This is it. So we, we come down. We'll tend to go keto for three or four days, depending on. I'll just make a point prior to this, and this is an important point that's just. Light bulbs just popped on. Contest diet, yeah, yeah. People think, oh, I'll do three months, I'll do four months, I'll do 10 weeks, I'll do this and that. Mm. This is nonsense, yeah. I had a lad come to me, this is a, a funny tale, but a tale that reiterates this point. This is a very important point. He came to see me and he's, he's a great lad and he, he trains at the great gym in uh, Horwich, Jay's gym, who's a great friend of mine. It was his first ever show, yeah? And basically, he, he said, can you have a look at me? I want to compete next year. So I had a look at him. And he said, right, how long do you think I'll need to diet for the show? I said, well, what we're going to do, you're going to do a 32-week diet. Sorry, you're going to do a 16-week diet. All oh, right, four months. I said, yeah, 16 week. I said, then followed by another diet of 16 weeks. His answer was, well, that's 32-week diet. I said, no, it isn't. I said, it's 16-week diet, then followed by a 16-week diet. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's 32. I said, it isn't 32 weeks, it's 16 weeks. Right. He said, well, he'd been polite then. He didn't want to say for a third time. He went, right, so it's 16 weeks followed by 16 weeks. I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, your first 16 weeks is to get you to the starting point of your competition diet. I said, because you've got over eight stone of body fat on, yeah. yeah? And we can't get eight stone of body fat on on a 16 week contest diet. That's you right. need to diet now on what is your off season to get to a, a realistic starting point for when I bring you in from four months out, 16 weeks. That's right. So it is 32 weeks. I said, no, 32 weeks will blow anyone's mind if you're doing a contest <laughs> diet for 32 weeks. Yeah. You're doing a 16-week diet now just to get in shape, ready to start a contest diet. So regarding carbohydrates for contest prep, I had a lad downstairs. He was an over-50s multi-champion, Roy Corns. I was getting 12 people ready. I had the fat lad, right, ask Roy after I give them the carb plan, yeah, the diet plan, including the carbs and everything. And he said to Roy, he said, how come he's got you on all them carbs? Roy was six pound over his previous title with six pound. <laughs> Fat lad was five and a half stone over. <laughs> and he thought that he could still have the same diet as the athlete who was in constant year round condition. <laughs> Mind boggling how you can expect. It's a real. So you've got to take into an account any yeah. contest plan. Mm. I've had people come up to me wanting a 12-week diet, carrying four and a half, five stone over the previous year's contest weight. So I'll say, we'll do simple maths. I had one clown come to me. He was 75 pounds over last, only six months earlier, his, his contest weight. It was 15 weeks to the next show. Yeah, he's 75 pounds over. So the simple equation was a division. It was five pounds, yeah, per week. Wow. Yeah, to get the 75 pounds off from his previous show. And I was being generous at 75 pounds because he wasn't tight enough in the previous show. Yeah. Right. He came back to me a day later. He said, yeah, I've decided I'm just going to take three pound a week off. Then I don't lose any muscle. 
I said, right, well, that's £45. I said, <laughs> yeah. I said, you're going to be stood on stage with a £30 of body fat still on you. How do you work that out? I said, I worked that out because I did mathematics at school. <laughs> I said, you obviously didn't. He said, yeah, but if, if I lose £5 a week, I'll end up catabolic. I said, yeah, you probably will. I said, but the alternative is, yeah, you're not catabolic and you've got 30 stone of fat on stage. You come last and you get laughed off stage. I said, you're the one that's put £75 on and I've not seen him since. He either couldn't understand the maths or I blew his mind. Yeah, fucking but hell. Point being, Tim, if <laughs> yeah. you want to do a 15-week diet, yeah. yeah, and you're more than, say, £40, £3 a week to come off, mm. <clears throat> take a show further down the line yeah. and give yourself ample time. You've got a less steep incline, yeah, to ascend if you've got only several pounds, yeah, yeah in several weeks. Let's take a pound or two pounds a week off. If you're the person who off-season eats like a pig and eats everything known to man, don't expect your prep coach or your trainer to be burdened with an impossible task. Yeah, that's yeah, true. You're making yeah. the incline virtually so severe that you're not going to be able to stick to the plan and you're going to risk catabolism. Yeah. So common sense dictates how many carbohydrates you're going to have on your diet. Yeah. If you come four months out and you've six stone to take off, you're going to have to go ketosis for the entire diet. We can't, we can't put 300 grams of carbs in when someone's got six pound a week to take off, can we? It's impossible. But the guy that comes to you in what I call a ready condition to start a contest. Yeah. But how that. many people come with a ready condition? It's They're all that. obese when they come to me, start of a diet. What sort of, uh, what sort of body fat percentage would you, would you class that as roughly? You know, like a, a ready to go diet. I wouldn't class it as a body fat percentage unless obviously we've got uh, calipers, yeah. you know what I mean? So a, a trained eye, yeah. but I would go off if I've got previous knowledge of what the lean yeah. muscle mass and body weight was at the previous contest, give or take a few pounds, because that doesn't matter. I would then just do a simple, I would weigh them on the spot. Okay. I would then do the subtraction of what they weigh now to what they weighed previously at the contest. If I've got no data from a previous contest, I would then take an estimate. Okay. And I would overestimate, you know, not in a ridiculous manner. But just but, them Yeah, time. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't sort of say, oh, you've only got a... Because how many people come to you? I've only got a stone to lose. Yeah. You know, and you, you may as well dress up as a clown and jump around <laughs> singing and dancing. A stone to lose. <coughs> we have this constantly. Mm. Everyone, yeah, my mate said, I've got a stone. Who's your mate? Who's you know what I mean? Mate? Which pub did he tell you that in? <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of nonsense that you listen. And yeah. I'm not just a bodybuilder. I'm not just a champion. Like Barry Vormare and Daz Smith and Ian Chambers and others. We own gyms and we're, we're in it seven days a week for 20 years. I've been training people for 30, right? I've heard it all. But in, in the gym, so I don't know, just have knowledge of training champions and being around people like Carl Jolly that trains here, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Universe. I have to listen to it all, you know what I mean? I'm, luckily, I'm not on social media because it, it would send me mental. Um, but <laughs> let's be realistic. Let's give ourselves ample time by starting the contest prep, let's say 12, 14 weeks out, in shape. Yeah. Don't, don't make, as I say, a task even harder. Make it easier. That's right. If you've got two pounds to take off per week, yeah, but it's more than achievable. If you're taking three, four, and people have come to me with five or six to take off, mm. you've not got a chance, unless you're sadistic and you love starving to death. You'd be in a bad place, wouldn't you, John? It's simple yeah. maths, Tim. That's right. Yeah, forget bodybuilding, learn some maths, folks. <laughs> I used to take about two stone off, roughly, between a I, yeah. two stone two off, stone. Yeah. yeah. Two stone in 16 weeks. Yeah. 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 And so do you have anything specific you do around your training in regards to nutrition? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I train some pretty elite athletes as well. So I'm sort of in sort of tick over mode at the minute. Mm -hmm. um, when I step the training up, which will probably be a couple of months time to like maximum levels, um, I'll be doing the same. But basically what I'll put them on off season, as I say, I'll try and get 100 grams of uh, maltodextrin in them and then 15 to 20 grams of BCA. Uh, I use a 
applied the BCAI drapes. It's got the isotonics in. Yeah. Is this after a training? Right? Before. Oh, before, yeah. Yeah, this is before. So we'll get that in prior. Um, as I say, have a good litre of water with that. Yeah. About, and then... Sorry, John, about an hour or...? or, or, uh, or 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. And occasionally, as I say, it'll carry on sipping through the workout. Right. Um, but we're not too stringent on time, whether it's consumed prior or they take it in. Right. We'll keep them hydrated for the workout as well. Workout probably lasts 30, 40 minutes. So, as I say, uh, isotonics, plenty of water, BCAs, 15 to 20 grams, and 100 grams of uh, maltodextrin or any, any simple carb, blue coals or all these other fancy uh, carbohydrates that are out now. Maltodextrin is what I use. It, yeah, was, same here. it was simple, it was cheap, it was abundant, so that's what we use. And then pulse workout, as I say, just the old school way. Um, this is, as I say, off season again, and I'll, I'll just come back to that in a minute. We'll get probably another 100 grams, yeah. Some of the smaller clients will be on 50, but 100 grams of uh, maltodextrin simple carbs, and then 50 grams of a fast acting whey, like an isolate, yeah. And uh, that'll be taken, as I say. Maybe if they've done legs and they're feeling, well, they will be feeling <laughs> rather unwell. <laughs> I don't want them to swig it in because it's got to go in two minutes after your workout and it goes in general straight on the floor again, you know, <laughs> or on the car park. As soon as they feel able, yeah, window of opportunity, as we say, get the simples in and, uh, as I say, get that protein and all the aminos and get that recovery phase. As I say, that glycogen stocked up and get that insulin shuttling everything into the, uh, the cells and get that. Some guys refuse, they, 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 they want to build muscle, but they go home, no, I'm having, I, I can't have the shake, I'm going to have my meal when I get in. Mm. But if you're having beef and veg and potatoes and everything, as I say, you've got, you've got that digestive time and you're missing the window opportunity. Borison and Kerry, when they, yeah. they started off, Borison was a massive ad uh, advocate of that pre and post workout nutrition and yeah. that window of opportunity feeding that muscle it's been put through great trauma and as i say it needs that repair and recovery process to take place as quickly as possible makes sense it's right. what i always did it's what all my clients who've gained stones and stones of muscles over the years it's worked for them yeah. so i'm not i'm not bothered about anyone else saying this and that i've seen it work get yourself a gym for 20 years have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of first-hand experiences and then come and talk to me, yeah? I'm not interested in, you've done this and you've done that. You need hands-on, get on the shop floor, and then you can write your books and tell people on the internet about this, this, and this. There's too many so-called smart Alex in this game. Yeah. Until you've owned a bloody gym, and you've been there and done it, and you've had people of all genetics, you know, yeah. some good, some poor, some average, yeah. and work with them thousands and thousands of times over 20 years, then you can come and sit down and tell me what's what. Right. Don't do a course and do get your certificate and make out you know what you're talking about. Every human being I've ever come across is different. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Massive variation, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Massive, there yeah. is. That's right. So what do you advocate around your training then? What do you, uh, how do you train? How do I train? Same yeah. again. Uh, how I train at minute is very, very basic, but during my time as a competitive yeah. bodybuilder, um, I've wrote some articles for Beef Magazine and we, me and Tim spoke to this prior to coming on air. That's right. Um, I used to train too often, too hard, uh, more, more, more. And yeah, I, I, I was uh, like an addict, addict to severe intensity and I, I got sort of, I had too much desire uh, for my own good really. So thinking that if you train legs, you don't need to be able to walk for five days and falling downstairs and <laughs> feeling ill and having really, I don't know, really sort of often colds and flu and sore throats, immune system battered, you know, and we spoke about the, the great one and only Lee Amy, stimulate, not annihilate. I used to think that 
you're a pussy, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're talking crap there, you know, that's a cop out for easy training. Now being wiser and older, you know, Lee was completely correct. And you live and learn, but yeah. my training philosophy is, as I say, everything once a week, yeah, even weak body parts. We have a tendency if the body part's weaker, this is me, this is me, I've made all these mistakes. I'll train the body part more mm -hmm. to make it grow more. It doesn't work this way. Dorian should have been listened to a long, long time ago. Favourite video ever, blood and guts, you know, but I thought, no, I, I have to do more than that. I have to do more. <laughs> yeah. He's a freak. He's genetic. He, he doesn't need, you know, but I've learned a lot from, uh, as I say, the master. And um, when I look back, I realised that they once said to Arnold, why do you train for so many hours so times a day? He just said, I love training. Mm. I'm a gym rat. I just love being in here. You know what I mean? They have nothing else to do. That's right. And he didn't say it was right. He didn't say it was, he just loves training. I love training. So I yeah. wanted to train more and more and more. But that's getting away from what the end goal is. Yes, totally. If to optimise muscle mass and to optimise a championship physique and fulfil your competitive goals, we should train smart and should train where we get a maximum production. Not to feed our love and desire of being in the gym yeah. and pumping the muscles up to look and feel great. No, but to maximise muscle growth. That should be, but it, it's, it's easy to say this, because it, but it's harder to do. It's dead hard to do. Because yeah. you get an addiction to love training so much and any addiction is hard to stop. It's true. So... My training, everything once a week. Big body parts, probably three exercises. Um, working sets, probably two per exercise. Doesn't yeah. sound a lot. I like to start off light. I like to pyramid up, probably 12 reps. I like to warm up, really, really into warm up, stretching and making sure everything's correct. A lot of lads will jump into heavy sets because they don't want to fatigue themselves. Yeah, I don't want to get fatigued benching and doing four or five warm-up sets. Well, you're going to come a real cropper. You're going to tear something. You're going to have a serious injury and you won't be able to do any sets. You've got to warm the muscle, warm the joints, and you've got to be patient. Take your time warming up. Don't rush into heavy weights. You will be injured. So I'll start off, do a nice set of 12. I'll put another 10 on, another 10. 10 reps, probably eight, you know, yeah. my low my low sets are never go less than six. I'm a bodybuilder, I'm not a power lifter. Yeah. And high reps, 10 to 15s, 15s occasionally. And safe, probably three exercises for a big body part, two for a small. Um, everything gets it once. And the way I split it, the routines, Everyone's got their own routine and way of doing yeah. it. Is it wrong and is it right? The way currently I do it and some of my athletes I train, and these are top athletes, they're not Mickey Mouse athletes, is uh, with the chest shoulders, day one, back and calves, day two, day three, rest. And then we'll do arms, day four, biceps, triceps. And then we do legs, day five. Day five, legs is on Friday, because. The guys have Saturday and Sunday off. Yeah. Rest. Don't stick your leg session the day before another body part. If you train legs hard, you need a rest day or these have two rest days. The rest days are when you're going to recover. The legs is, by definition, if you do train them properly, is the toughest and the most grueling and most intense yeah. uh, workout of the week. So don't stick it before. So structuring a workout plan through experience and common sense again. And... I have a lad trained the other week. He was doing hamstrings on Thursday and then quads on Friday. You know, quite obviously incorrect. Yeah. I said, space your hamstrings. He wanted to specialise on hams. Right. But he's doing squats on Friday. He's involving his hams after he's also already ruined them on a Thursday. So space everything out in a correct manner. If you're going to be training chest and splitting shoulders up, don't train your chest Monday and then a shoulder session on Tuesday. Because anyone who knows about physiology, your shoulders get battered when you train chest. And I'm not into training shoulders with press after press after press. Shoulders, as I say, get that much stimulation from chest. 
we specialise on rear deltoid and lateral raises yeah. for side head. Front, you know, I always had too much front. So you do a bicep shot, your delt, yeah, front head pops up here, makes your delt, uh, your bicep smaller in comparison. Yeah. So I don't ever, Gary Strydon told me not to press and he had the best delts in the world. Wow. And then Kevin Ravone came along and almost matched them. And he had three shoulder surgeries, Gary. And then he realized that he was so predominantly front delt from the huge shoulder press and Olympic lifting. He decided to specialize after the three operations. He'd no choice either, to be honest, because yeah. of the surgeries, um, laterals, rear delts, laterals. And I carried out exactly, you know, to me, he had the best delts. Mm. He told me to do this. So I listened, yeah. common sense again. I listened yeah. to the great stride and, and my delts became that spherical cap delts. Yeah. And I'm proud that in any show on any photograph, my delts were a very strong body part. Yeah. And do you reckon that's because you had more rest on your front delt because you didn't do it overtrained and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you've got a very, very heavy front delt, it doesn't need working anymore no. because you're not going to get the balance. No. If your side, if your side delt is way underdeveloped and your front delt is huge in comparison, leave your front delt alone and let everything catch up and build that proportion and symmetry right. and balance. How many people though with good body parts, same again, they train that good body part more than they train the weak one. Well, yeah. why? Well, I enjoy training legs. Your legs are huge, <laughs> you've no back. Yeah. I don't like training back. Well, that's why it's poor. You've got to change your mindset. Yeah. So put your routine together wisely. Four days a week, if you train hard, is plenty. Your rest is important. And we do two on one off, two on two off, which means Wednesday and weekend are off. Yeah. All my clients do that program. Yeah. Yeah. There's, it ain't the program that fails, it's the individual. You know what I mean? If yeah. they're working hard on a program, you, you know, we, we, I come across this a lot. That doesn't work for me. It stopped working. It's no, the program didn't stop working. You did. Yeah. You miss workouts. You come in, you train half cocked. Yeah. You are the problem, not the workouts. Everyone wants to blame something other than themselves. Mm. Training programs are so simple. You put the program together, you stick at the program, you don't change it every week, and you perform to your maximum ability and be honest to yourself and you do full range reps, correct reps, no nonsense. I like it, I like it. So does your training differ when you're cutting compared to when no, you're walking? You no, stick it to the same? It does. And the people I get ready for the show, we try and perform. Obviously we're on a carb restricted diet when we're contest training. But all I'm trying to do with me and my clients is prevent catabolism. Yeah. Give the body a reason to hold on to that muscle mass. We, we have a, a problem, obviously, with catabolism when we diet and we can detect pharmacology and products and everything to try and prevent it. But you are running a, a fine line, mm. you know, and this is why, as I say, if you start your prep without a lot of work to do, i.e. you're carrying less body fat, we can avoid catabolism because by definition, the diet doesn't need to be as severe. If we can keep carbohydrates in whilst we're prepping for a competition, it gives us an ability to maybe perform more intensely in our work, our workout. Whereas if I've got lads on ketosis because we need to bring them in, they will feel drained, the weights yeah. will go down, but I don't feel that there's any need to change the routine of their exercises. Okay. As long as that signal, as I say, to that brain is we're working, we're training, you know what I mean? And get yeah. that response. We're doing 30 reps for body parts, trying to cut your muscle up. This is something else I hear all the time. Absolute nonsense. You use your weights to hold muscle. We're not gonna build muscle on a strict diet coming into a show, but we're gonna hold the muscle by utilizing the heaviest weights that were possible yeah. in the correct form possible. You don't cut your muscle by doing sets of 50, right? Fast curls and speeding your reps up. That's bullshit, right? Diet, nutrition, and cardio is what gets you in shape. Separate issues. Weights build muscle. They don't cut you up. Nonsense. Very good point there, John. Yeah. Yeah, you hear it all I've the time. I've had lads curling this fast. <laughs> yeah. I'm cutting biceps up. Yeah. Shut up. Shut you up. You bloody idiot. <laughs> good Lord. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see it all on the all on the social media all yeah. the time. Oh, now. that CrossFit Christ. If I did that at my age, <laughs> my arms would be left in the ceiling, I'd be, my torso would be on the floor. <laughs> yeah, some of have million mile an hour chins. Oh Christ. I love it. Stupid. Okay. We're gonna talk about uh, uh, show stuff. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So um how'd your water deplete for a show? Water deplete, yeah. yeah. I, I saw that question earlier. A lot of people are different, aren't they? Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people change this around. Yeah, that. yeah. So be I, I, I changed it on myself a couple of times, more than a couple. Gravity, gravity. How many physiques I've got ready? And I've, I've got, I think, 117 champions I've prepped since I've opened. Wow. Uh, several Mr. Britons and Mr. Universes included. Everyone's different. Yeah. God, the. It's such a tough task. The, the, the week before the show is the week that <coughs> I don't sleep. I go to pieces. <laughs> I'm that worried, you know what I mean? And upper body condition not matching lower body condition. Uh, gravity folks tends to take fluid, obviously, into our, our lowers. Um, holding water in, in quads. Now, drying water out, obviously, to get that sharp condition and that detail in our legs, but then flattening the upper body out. And I, I had this problem throughout my competitive career. Mm. I'd think, you know, intercostals, my back was granite hard with striations and detailing. My bloody legs, I thought, they don't even look like I've dieted, you know what I mean? Wow. Uh, but it was, I knew it was water. Yeah. Get up in the morning, obviously, when we're dehydrated as we sleep, people don't realise you lose four or five pounds whilst you sleep. Every breath you take is moisture, with moisture constantly coming out of our skin. Yeah. Yeah, I've lost all that weight, I've not even been for a wee. No, you know, breathe on a piece of glass and see every breath you take. So we're drier and we're more dehydrated. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets up in the morning, I'm terrible. Bloody hell, I need a cup of tea. You know, you're dehydrated and the legs will be in. And then you're walking on them all day, you're drinking all your fluid as we want to, five or six litres. We have our meals, we do our job in the gym, train a few people, and you look at your legs at night and think, where have them buggers gone, you know? Yeah. So I always suffered from lower mm. uh, water retention right. and my upper body would be sharp. Now that caused a dilemma regarding... Yeah. So you've got to bring the legs in, but not at too much expense of fullness in your upper body and getting what as we all refer to as a, a, a flat look, yeah, where the muscles flatten out and you lose that nice round fullness. Yeah. Um, to this day, because I've done the same thing twice and it hasn't had the same effect twice. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, unproven science, everyone's different. Some people, I've got a, a Northwest champion downstairs now training, Gaz Wilson, Gazzy's legs never carry water, but his upper body does. Really? That's yeah. interesting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah now, so... how do you work that one out? Yeah, that's you know. the complete opposite of normal, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, so, every athlete has his own set of problems. I avoid any diuretics at all costs, if possible. Yeah. I don't mind using diuretics if it's a necessity, because my job is to get someone on stage sharp. Yeah. I'd rather someone have sharp condition in his legs and be over dehydrated than have no cuts in his legs whatsoever. Yeah, you was a couple of people complained about me. Yeah, you were flat today, John. I said, I know. I said, I overdid it, but at least I got them legs in and I got them cuts, them deep cuts. You know, I used to prefer to having cuts where I could slot coins in. You know, I didn't just want a little, oh, lads will go or was shredded, you know, no cuts in those grooves, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's well I'd rather have those and flatten out and lose a little bit of fullness than be full, but not have those cuts, if you know what I mean. Yeah, totally. So it, it is a compromise, it is a compromise. You're trying to maintain fullness, which means water in the muscle and maximize condition. Now, the problem with water in the muscle is, as I say, if it spills over, it ends up subcutaneous and that's what smooths them over. But you can have localised water retention. I've had to read about, I've had to read, read up on edema for one of my other top athletes. And you can have localised edema. Uh, it's to do with cell structures. 
very technical, very deep. Yeah, and one of my athletes, even John Hodgson mentioned, his hamstrings was feathered, his glutes were as ripped as Andrew Merrifield's and Gary Lister's in the prime. And yet his front quads were completely smooth, full of water. His intercostals and midsection were 100%. And that's when I had to investigate. And that's when I found upon this. Interesting. Yeah, yeah so interesting, interesting there. there are a lot of um, medical reasons for individuals being different and quite difficult to... Mm. So it's a balancing act. Yeah. Flat, but shredded. Full, but smooth. We're trying to get keep as much fullness whilst getting that condition. But I'd rather be over sharp and flat than big yeah. and smooth. 24 hour water cut. So we're on stage at 6 p.m. Saturday. I'll probably take water out probably about 6 p.m. Friday. They can sip, yeah. wet the mouth and I've spit it back out. Um, if I notice in the afternoon the flattening off and everything's in, they might get a little, but I tend to put half a litre in backstage just to get that blood volume back up yeah. and begin a very mild light pump up. Um, if they're still flat, I'll just go on the vascularity and I'll say, right, have a little bit more. And when I see things happening backstage, I'll say, right, we'll hold it there. So same again, a little bit of trial and error. Mm. But in general, as I say, I've done a 48 hour um, experiment where I didn't drink for 48 hours. I felt utter shite. I bet you did, yeah. Uh, was, that was when I did the England 2011 and came third behind Dave Fox and Guesty. But I've actually drank. I was passing out, just about to pass out and I've drank six half litre bottles of water in five minutes. And my body just, you know, same again. It was more out of necessity than, you know, I'd gone in wanting to really bring my legs through sharp, which it did. I was flat, but I was also ill. Yeah. I drank the water because I was that 48 hours with no water. And the transformation was amazing. And it, it pulled me back into that third place, you know. Um, so I'm still learning. I'm not an expert on water. Um, I, there probably not many are. It's going to be a rarity you, you that. Try and yeah. do do what's best for you. You will, unfortunately, have to experiment. I mean, some people use salt, some people take it out. I've seen that work with for some and not and do the opposite for others. Yeah. Um, yeah, difficult one, that, Tim. It's a yeah. tough one, isn't it? Yeah, just thing. ignore everything I've said about water pumps. <laughs> yeah. I used to just cut mine at 6 p.m. the night before, I mean. Right, yeah. That's what I used yeah. to do, yeah. Just yeah. 6 p.m. the night before. And then, I mean, I was quite fortunate because I never really had a lot of water and I just used to, yeah. I used to, I used to be all right, really. Yeah. But, yeah, but some people do, don't they? Everyone's different. There yeah. is, and stress. Yeah. I have another athlete who yeah. suffers from PTSD. Yeah. And, um... It was bonfire night last year, he was an army veteran and it caused a massive water load effect. Really? Um, from the fireworks, yeah. Uh, quite, quite sad really. Oh. Um, so stress, remain calm on contest day, you know. Yeah, because it gives you yeah, You will, will, if you're stressing and, and people rushing around and stood up and faffing about, just get yourself in a corner, get your feet up relax and calm down the calmer the sharper you look if you're stressing around you just start holding more and more water it's a stress response isn't it Tim? yeah totally it's a stressful time to be fair it is isn't it it is you but know, don't you yeah you tend to get pestered a lot don't you i'm yeah. thinking yeah i have in a gym i used to have a hundred and whatnot people come and support me and all wanting to talk to you and whatnot and mm. But I, I had a couple of minders that used to say, look, just leave him, he's, he's focusing, he's, he needs to reduce his stress, he needs to yeah. relax. It's yeah. massively important. Yeah, you just try and get out of the way, don't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 Just chill out. Probably the quick, sooner you get back to these, the better, isn't yeah. it, I guess? Yeah. yeah. And a little one, holding water in your legs. Yeah, try not to train your legs, at least an intense workout. Even leave a couple of weeks. This more, more, more effect as well, you think. If I don't train them for two weeks, they'll shrink. Yeah. And I've got lads, and I'm sorry, there's be ones out here listening on this uh, 
this interview, don't be training your legs contest week. They're not going to shrink. All you're going to do is cause trauma and you're going to suffer water retention. Yeah. So I'd go even further and as I said, have two weeks off before your contest. I know it's hard if you've got contests week upon week upon week. Yeah. You can actually end up having four or five weeks from training your legs at all. But hopefully, if you've got enough muscle on them legs, as I say, because if you do train your legs anything like intensity, you will suffer and they will smooth out. Mm. And then you're going to suffer in your, your placings and your trophies. You can see that when you do uh, when you train on uh, on legs, can't you? You can, mate. When, you, when you're like ready, ready show, Nick, and you do your legs and you try and pose them, there's nothing there, is there? No, you know, no. They play around, they, yeah, they? they do. Yeah. So it's important because mm. it's all right talking about just cutting water, but there are all other factors, like you say, stress, mm. training your legs too close. Stress is a big You'll one. You get away it? your upper body, and what you, week before the show. You know, I mean, obviously, if you carb load the old school way, say for three days or whatever, you don't want to be having massive workouts anyway. Mm. Number of people are saying, because of stress and worry, carb load and train. You know, you're putting carbs in and then you're taking them out. You know, it. it's it's yeah. strange to see. It is mad. Yeah, the it? mind goes mad, doesn't it, it, when you're getting ready. And I guess that's where you need someone to help you and guide you along the way. Yeah, isn't chain it? you up. And, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like we talked about this before, John. Didn't restraint, we? yeah. You know, where you don't know where, what you look like yourself no. sometimes, do you? No, you don't. You yeah. panic. Yeah. Everyone panics, even the, the champions. I panicked. You need someone in your corner to say, look, you know. You look all right. You know, carbs used to make me panic. You know, I had some phobia of carbohydrates, you know. Yeah, yeah. You think, right, I need to carb up now. No, no carbs. You can't. Carbs are for cheats. <laughs> you know, I used to say Satan. Satan. Carbs were Satan. You know, you, you can't because I'm a Christian. I'm proud of it. But <laughs> carbs are Satan's food, you know. I used to stress about brushing my teeth the day before, you know. Yeah, thinking think, about yeah. Yeah, my old water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do, you do odd things, that don't you? Toothpaste, <laughs> but I sold him in it. Yeah, yeah. That's so yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, I were all mad. So, John, you've got a pretty famous walk onto stage, haven't you, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give us a little bit of insight to where that came from, dear. Right. Um, yeah, well, I think that eccentricity, like, that I've got, um, it was like, a, you do your routine, you practice your routine, you do your comparisons, your compulsory poses, you practice all that. But everyone just walks on like they're walking for a, a newspaper or to go into the corner shop. So I wanted to make the, uh, I wanted to make the walk like a, a gladiatorial into the arena type thing, but with a real, really exaggerated, <laughs> swagger and <Love> just <laughs> and I did a couple of steps and then it just got like completely sort of out of hand and uh, and yeah some people complained and said it was arrogant people like Gary Lister who's an idol of mine he was like that's entertainment you know it's creating <laughs> it's creating something special you know it's it's you it's it, it's my personality coming out because I'm so quiet, but go on stage and it's like, you know, look at this and James. I'm here, you know what I mean? And it got more and more, as I say, crazy and uh, I, I have a crazy side to me. So it was, uh, it was my personality coming out and creating a walk rather than just trundling on stage to centre under the lights. You know, as soon as I come from that curtain, it was wham, bam, thank you, my, my, I'm here. We're having We it. are rocking, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? We're rocking, yeah. I so know, yeah. it was fun, basically. It was great. It was fun. I was only having, I didn't mean any harm by it. A few people were a bit, they were a bit, I don't know, they, they thought, I was told not to do the walk at any more shows. Were you? Of several. Who told of, you that? Just several officials, um, because it could, cause my judging and my points to be oh, poor, really? uh, get under people's skin and come across as arrogant and disrespectful. But really? I said, well, I'm sorry it seems that way, but it, it wasn't intended to. It was it was me. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Changing into that alter ego, yeah. that gladi gladiator and getting on stage and doing the business. Because yeah. I'm competitive and I'm doing whatever I do, you know what I mean? And if I turn into that, 
person, then so be it. But I'm there to win, you know what yeah. I mean? And everyone had, most of the bodybuilders and everyone had a laugh about it. So that's what I did. But yeah, everyone, I'll never regret it, like, and it no. was a bit of fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, every aspect, you know, it always goes... Yeah, talks about it that shit, you know. Me, yeah. You know, and, it's, yeah. and every, everyone, everyone has a good thing to say about yeah. it. You know, it's my fun. mate Daz Smith is 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 he's got good as well. I like Daz, yeah, because Daz Daz is that character as well. He's he's forthright and mm. you know loads of respect for that guy. And he, you know, and he you know, and all you could see with Daz like you know when it, when he used to walk on stage, it's like here I am, la. You know what I mean? It's yeah, you know, and Barry on stage, Barry was very intense on stage, yeah. I thought. You know, he walked on there and then in that lineup, you know, if anyone come close, they got an elbow and <laughs> he was, yeah. you know, that head would be nodding and, you know, that, 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 and Gary Lister when he used to come on and that eerie music that he used to post to, he just used to stand there and just like that with that menacing <laughs> smile. You know, that, did, watching him guest pose, when people had their own little way of doing things, mm. that characteristic come out, it made it entertaining and, you know, it, instead of just being another routine. Because they can be very monotonous, can't they? They can. You know, if you can leave right. an imprint in someone, you've not gone far wrong it's in entertainment. Thing. As Gary Lister said, like, to people that complained, he said, it's entertainment. We it need is. more of this, not less. We do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More yeah. than 100% of that. So I was having a laugh and I'm a bit nuts, so that was that. So, John, I know you've had a, a pet tear. Yeah. Like, like I've had one myself. Yeah. Okay, so how have you coped with your training since you've had the pet tear? Well, I had it, the, the, I had a couple of little ones from benching heavy when I was young, nothing visible. And then I had 2005 in a pub up town. Uh, never drank, I just went in to pick some money up and then I, I got attacked off an, an idiot. So I, uh, I got a really bad peck to that. November 2005, uh, I was two weeks out from the universe, like, so my body was dry and everything and I, uh, being a wrestler, like, I just took him down and put him in an headlock and the headlock went from an intentional choke to I'm going to try and pull your head off your shoulders. So I put that much force into it and suffered this horrific tour. And um, managed to get on stage in Germany. Um, it was difficult, everything was that swollen and sore. Uh, didn't have surgery, it was a muscle tear, it wasn't tendon, uh, yeah. it was nothing to do with tendon. Mine was the same actually. Um, but yeah, left left like as I say, it's not noticeable to most people. I was lucky that it didn't cause a massive um, aesthetic uh, disruption. But heavy benching and heavy pressing and stuff, I've avoided ever since. Yeah. And unfortunately, I tore the same spot again for five months ago, spotting someone in the gym. Really. Uh, giving someone a lift and it tore on exactly, obviously the scar tissue. Right. It went again, but that was like, what, 13 years after I originally did it. Wow. Did it, did it go uh, black and did it make it worse? Uh, luckily, I've got the Olympic team physio, who's not only my best mate, he, he has his um, therapy centre at my gym, so he, he treated it for 14 weeks. Uh, it hasn't disfigured. Um, I've took four months and I'm still coming back from rehab on it. How do I train chest due to the pector uh, wisely? Yeah. Warm up, I stretch, I do very precise, slow movements. It hasn't prevented me from doing any, but throwing great big heavy weights around mm. in anything other than perfect form, uh, I just wouldn't risk it. Yeah. As you're probably aware, it'll just tear without any warning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. The damage is yeah. there, it's always got to be cured for. It's scar tissue, scar tissue. And um, it'll always be a weakness that yeah. needs respect and, as I say, caution. That's right. You know, I yeah. mean, sometimes, I mean, I, I, I did mine in Barry Von Wars Gym, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you do it on? Incline press, but right. I was a bit silly, really. I was just trying to show off a bit. I was young and naive, yeah. as I used to do, and I put too much weight on, and it was the last set. And he just went. Inclined uh, dumbbell or bar? Barbell. Barbell. Yeah, yeah. just went. Yeah, just. Yeah. Uh, but I used to train on a speed machine because I used to train on my own. Wow. 
So um, I went to a free bar there under the stabilizers, probably yeah. couldn't cope with it. And they just went. Jeez, right. Yeah, that's, yeah. What I, that's what I think happened personally. Yeah. 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 But ever since, you just know what, if something's going to go wrong, you just put it back. Yeah. You just put it tend to have, when you've scar tissue, folks, you get a very tight feeling. So you get that tightness, obviously, when you train a muscle correctly, it pumps up and gets really full and tight. But when you've got scar tissue in there and a, a, a serious tear from uh, past injury, there's tightness and there's, oh my God, that's going to rip at any yeah. second. And you do feel it, can't you? It is. It's psychological yeah. as well. It's so, it's so daunting to try and get through a workout. Yeah. I'll get through a workout now when I train chest and it's like a relief. Oh, good. I've trained hard today on chest and it hasn't at all, you know. <laughs> it's nice and pumped. A relief, <laughs> yeah, a yeah. relief. It's worry. It's a worry. I know what you yeah. mean. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. It's good. So giving some people some good advice there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Work through them. Okay. So we'll go cut back to when you're showing. So we've actually covered this a little bit when you were trip to, uh, to Brazil, but how would you normally cope when you travel away to a show? With competing? Yeah, well, creatures of habit. When we go abroad onto foreign shores to compete, obviously we're hoping that there's correct food available in the local stores, which often there isn't. Um, some athletes will take a microwave or some cooking facilities for the hotel. But I used to try and take, you know, and as you're well aware, if you go to Australia. Yeah. Yeah, Tim got found a few hundred dollars for <laughs> baked potatoes. He was a fugitive. I was. Yeah, you, probably, you probably don't know this, but I'm talking to a wanted man. He is. He's, uh, he's on the, yeah, his photographs are in all the airports in Australia. Yeah. I got anchor for it and everything. Yeah, he, uh, he, he made a mistake of com competing uh, with the British team. <laughs> went to Australia and he had some baked potatoes. <laughs> yeah, he was arrested like a, a, a cocaine smuggler. Oh, we pocket money, John. <laughs> yeah, uh, what, what was the fine? It was about $200. $200 for a couple of baked potatoes. <laughs> oh, 200 yeah. quid for dollars. Yeah. And, I couldn't, and I couldn't get the Australian rules top I was going to get. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go, folks. Yeah, wanted man smuggling potatoes into Australia. Oh. But yeah, you, you, you sometimes try and take your own food, don't yeah, you? But yeah, I tried. That's what it, I used to do. Tried it to, isn't yeah. always uh, legal or acceptable <laughs> and uh, will sting you big time in your pocket. So yeah, we get there and hopefully the hotel, Slovakia was good. They laid a uh, great organisation. They laid all the foods on and everything. Awesome. Um, not so bad if you go to Spain, Germany, France, obviously the, you've got more or less everything. Some of the team hotels lay all the meals on so you can get your rice or whatever, your potato and get your chicken and do whatever you, you do. Um, but it is a disruption. Uh, mm. Anyone flying a long distance, uh, even if I fly to Spain, I always get swollen feet. Yeah. So try and allow for um, maybe holding water when you get off the flight. So a good point would be, if you're doing a Saturday show, which they tend to be the internationals, if you can get there for Wednesday, Thursday at the latest, but don't, don't be landing Friday, you know. If you're going to be landing Friday and you end up suffering from flight water retention, you know, you, you could be struggling to get the, get it off in time as I was, you know. Yeah, it's hard, um, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so allow plenty of time, get yourself settled, stick to your plan and try and relax, you know find where the venue is and where everything is and just try and make it from home from home really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think we got to Australia about three days before, something like that. Yeah, when you'll yeah. have jet lag and all sorts, wouldn't you? Yeah, it was tough. I was still smooth. Yeah. Smooth than normal. Yeah. 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 Did, did you notice yourself though? Definitely, yeah. 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 A little yeah. bit. And I was flat because I couldn't have any potatoes, John. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they deflated his muscles. Bastards, after. yeah. They, they like, yeah. cost me that title. They, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Came Your second, wallet then. was flat as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, then we'll skip to another one. So, um, how long did it take you to win your show winning physique? I mean, we sort of covered how long you've trained for before, didn't we? But because you, you, you went straight into it. Uh, you are showing, didn't you, after a long time of training, really, didn't you? Yeah, how long? See, my, I was interrupted. I had a really bad motorcycle crash at 24. Started at 16. Didn't really know what I was doing. 24, I had a crash, and I had six 
six and a half years till I was 30 and a half in rehab. Wow. Um, 27 breaks in my arm and really? everything, yeah. Yeah, all the nerves were damaged, so I couldn't actually use the arm. So wow. it took and six and a half years. Saying that, you had the massive arms, man. Yeah. You had really big yeah. arms. You I know. don't know what they did to them when <laughs> they operated. I think they left something in there. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's one thing I always remember on the stage yeah. is your biceps yeah. shots. They still are. Yeah. I just don't show them anymore. <laughs> my family all have big arms, you know. Yeah. My dad and my granddad, yeah. So I hardly ever train them, but they're probably wow. about 20 inch now. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, so even the, the damage from the crash didn't That's impressive. really. But uh, so, 30 and a half, I got back training probably hard at 32, and then I competed at 35. So, I'm not really in a position to say how long it had taken. Now, going on, people I've had in my gym, uh, I'd say a good, if you're lucky, three years to to go on stage with a possibility of winning, mm. you know, a uh, first time or a novice. Yeah. Or juniors can be different. Yeah. Uh, you can tend to make quick gains up until a point. And you've obviously got the criteria of being under 18 or under 21 in general. Um, so, yeah, if you're a junior, you're probably going to have to compete sooner rather than later, down to the fact that you won't be a junior some anytime soon. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. we've had juniors from here and even though I wouldn't class them as complete, we've put them in and they've competed and won some titles. So, um, but other than that, I would have maybe said, no, we'll just give it another year just to finish that off or yeah. put a little bit of muscle on your hamstring or your back. So if you can get on stage from first time walking in the gym in two or three years, You've done very, very, very well. Unfortunately, they want them even quicker than that now, you know. They do, yeah. And you're not, you're not able to yeah. present a decent physique. It takes time to build, doesn't it? It does, Tim, yeah, yeah. it does. Saying that, we, we met um, a few, uh, it was before Christmas, um, Samson, um, his IFBB pro chat, he's, he's like, yeah. Four years he's trained and he's about 21 still. Yeah. It's unreal. Yeah. But it's a freak, isn't it? Freak yeah. of nature. Oh, yeah. Blessed, blessed yeah. you know, blessed uh, with yeah. some, some good genes. But he was a rugby player beforehand, so he was Right, big he was away. physical, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Bertle Fox at 16, mm. you know, one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. Yeah. Definitely. You know, even as a junior, the kid was packed with muscle, yeah, you know what I mean? Boy, wasn't he? And same again, he just classed it as a freak of nature. You know, Bertle as a kid was huge. I mean, Lee Priest, Branch Warren as yeah. teenagers, Ed Robinson. Lee Priest was massive, wasn't Ed he? Robinson, yeah. did he bench 6'10 at 17? He's still got the world record. <laughs> yeah, teenage Mr. America, 6'10 wow. at uh, 16 or 17. Good effort. Um, Ian Harrison squatted 705 at 17. Did he? Yeah, 705 pounds <laughs> at 17. <laughs> Uh, Ian was junior Mr. Universe at 17. 17? Four years before the wow. 21st yeah, limit. He was IFBB Pro at 21. Was he? He was a freak of nature, Ian. Uh, he was a good friend of mine. Wow. And uh, he was another genetic freak. Good yeah. Effort. 17, he won the 15 stone 10, I think he was at 17 15. when he won junior Naba Universe, yeah. God, he must have... Yeah, I'm scared and you know, we started training at 15, you know, so wow, two years he won the universe. Some genetics, yeah. then, isn't it? He was, yeah, wow. but he was a great pro, so yeah. there aren't many, are there? Let's no. be honest, that's true. Oh, and that's the point don't pick a pro's routine up, right? For a pro's advice in Flex magazine and think if I do that, I'm gonna look like him, yeah, and you won't, so don't bother, yeah. <laughs> A lot of the time, they're not even their routines anyway, are they? No, no. <laughs> they're just chucked in you know, there. No, I've got, I'm telling you this because I, I hear it several times a week, you know, I'm doing this, you know, that such a body does and, you know, just stick to the reality and stick to the proper plan. Can't beat basics, can you? Yeah, it? you're not, they associate that routine that he does with his physique and it might not even be his routine, as you say, you, yeah. you can't be sure. And if it is, it doesn't matter. No. He's Mr. Olympia, you're not, you're a beginner. Yeah. It's not re any relevance whatsoever. All you have to do is perform the exercises given in a correct manner. 
yeah, and be consistent and have patience. You're not going to get somewhere faster by copying Ronnie Coleman's back workout, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just calm down. <laughs> calm <Yeah>. down. <laughs> yeah. So last point then, John. So if you were going to give some advice to uh, a new bodybuilder, you know, what would you what would Calm say down. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, advice to a new bodybuilder. Yeah, get yourself around people that have been there and done it, champions. Um, listen to experts, not fools. If you listen to a fool, you'll become a fool. So don't let the internet ruin you, yeah? Don't become an asshole because of it and don't listen to things that are on it. Find a person in the flesh, yeah? Too many people are on phones and... PCs and doing this. Go down to a gym in your local town. Find a bona fide champion. If you want to be a bodybuilder, then you're going to get taught by a bodybuilder, not someone with his PT certificate who's never been on stage, who's never dieted on, who's never trained on. It's irrelevant. Pick the champion with the CV. Ask him for advice. Ask him, is he willing to help you? I'm sure. You know, most of us, you know, as old timers that's been there and done it, are willing to offer help and advice. And show a bit of loyalty and respect as well if they give you the time and advice. Don't just uh, treat them like dirt, like a few clowns have with me. Um, and be patient, be patient. But follow the right path by listening to the wise old man, yeah? The expert, the proven expert, not the brackets experts, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Someone that's done it, not I'm going to do this and going to do that. The proven expert with a CV, ask for his help and advice, listen and then stick to the plan. Don't deviate off path, you will go around in circles and utilise, as I say, the things outside your head called ears. And that P thing inside the ears, your brain, yeah, try and fill it with some accurate sound advice. And that's all I'll say. And don't, as I say, it, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. That's too right. Well done, yeah. <laughs> Right then, dude. So thanks very much for all your uh, wise words. There's so lots of wise words there. And I hope you guys will take some uh, advice from that and some... Uh, great moving time moving forward um thanks again john thanks a lot to tim i'd just like to say i'm here today because this is a genuine guy i met tim over what 12 13 years ago i watched him compete with the great flex in the junior nab of britain uh awesome junior awesome physique he got injured he's had time out and he's got a genuine site there that's just trying to inform and advise people he's got a great gym down there if you're ever up that way and this isn't an advert because this guy's for real. You know, I'm, I'm sat here doing this. I don't even have a website, I don't go on social media. I'm not here to blow my own trumpet. I'm here to help this guy because I respect him. So use his site, use his advice, have a look, have a learn and listen. And as I say, end of the day, it's a pleasure. He's frozen here. He's sat in my gym for two hours. He's just got up and said he's frozen cold. He's froze to death because he's in Preston up north. Right? Yeah. And end of day, it's a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks Tim. God Thanks bless very you. much, God John. bless everybody. Yeah. <laughs>